You want to add color to your portrait work, but the combinations just aren't working out. Stick with us through this episode of Photography 180. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and a new episode in the series Photography 180. Today we're focusing on color and how to get more visual interest in your studio portraits using colored gels. So let's get right to it. So guys, I have my son here, uh, Alessio, in the studio with us and he's gonna help us demonstrate this color exercise. And I'm using uh, as my key light a Flashpoint Explorer 400 Pro with the Magbox Pro 24 Octa attached. Uh, pretty much almost on camera access, elevated up, angled down. Um, and I'm gonna show you the first shot is just going to be key light only. Alessio, I can have you cross your arms for me, bud, just a little bit. And I'm using an 85 millimeter on the Sony A92. Uh, my settings are 1/160th f3.2 and ISO 100. You'll see the image on the screen here. Uh, just a clean image, simple, um, straightforward, but we want to add more creative interest to this. Uh, I'm going to show you another image which will give you an idea of the image we're trying to emulate today. It's a picture I took of myself a few years back during a light test. Uh, and you can see the use of the colors orange and blue, which are considered complementary colors. Now I'm going to link you to another thing here, guys, on another website it's through Canva. And it's going to be extremely helpful as you try and go down that path of adding color to your work. Going to go into the color theory and color wheel, and it's going to allow you the opportunity to select uh, your primary color, and it will give you the right combinations to go for, which is going to be extremely helpful in getting started. These are good starting points uh, to go with what is considered scientifically complementary or analogous or whatever you want to have itself. So, um, so I have two lights in the back. Uh, both have a Magmod gel attached. On the right in the back is an orange gel. On the back in the left is a blue gel. Those are two Flashpoint 200. So I'm popping on these lights in the back. Um, they're going to be on group B. And typically I have th those lights set to a much lower power than my key light. Could be a stop, could be two stops, could be three. It all depends on your environment, how far your lights are, the look you're going for. Right now I have it set at 1 1 28th power. And Alessio, we're going to keep that same pose for me. Boom, and I love the image off the bat. We get a nice rim of color on each side of him. There's no spill around to the nose, which is something you want to keep an eye on. Um, but I'm looking for that one extra element of creativity and a great way to add some extra depth and dimension to the image. And the best way that you can do that here in studio or even out on the field would be atmosphere aerosol. I'm going to show you how we do that just now. Alessio is going to hold his position. I'm just going to spray a little bit up and down. I want to make sure that haze is in between our backlights and our subject. Unless y'all write to me. Perfect. One, one, two, three. These are perfect. And the great thing about the haze is it will kind of hang in the air for a good amount of time. So even just a little bit of haze will float up there, give you time to get back to your position, take a couple of shots. And if you need to jump in again and do it, you can do that. Hope you enjoyed this episode in the series. I'll show you all the images up on the screen here and feel free to leave us comments or ask questions down below. I'll be happy to help. All right. Good luck and we'll see you guys next week.